okay so uh, we'll just uh, address jackin's question so um about spiritual discernment when we put our faith and it's beyond logic but god wants us to pursue putting our trust in him now how do we respond to others when they see logic and calculate based on the natural report which is which are the facts so so the thing is how do we respond yeah it's it's it, it is a difficult thing right it is a difficult thing when we uh, when we want to walk in faith and go beyond what the facts are stating and uh, when you clearly know that well god has spoken and uh, you know god has confirmed and so this is the path this is this is a decision that you need to take um it's very difficult to see uh, i mean to explain to others right we can uh, we can say okay this is what it is you know in some cases we can right like let's say you have an opportunity to explain and say i know these are the facts i know this is what you know we are seeing in the natural but you know this is what uh, god has spoken and in 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 whatever you know this is this is the word this is the prophetic word and god has been leading um so so can we do this so maybe there are you know maybe it's family maybe it's um, you know in, in that kind of a setting um you can actually explain you can actually go forward uh even you know even when when there's a very natural uh, response saying you know these things are it's a foolish it's foolishness to do this so so maybe we can do it with consent you know right it involves the consent of the person so therefore we need to explain and do it but it's a difficult thing like right? maybe in a in another setting you know like a like even in a like a professional setting maybe it's you're running your business and then there are other people involved in it and then you need to do this you know you you sense strongly that god wants you to do this well it's it's difficult to explain it but maybe it involves some kind of negotiation like saying that i know you know this is i feel very strongly but can we can we do this right i know to you it doesn't make sense to you it seems like a big huge risk uh, but uh, this this one time can we do this right so and uh, maybe when people see the fruit of it okay uh, see the fruit of it and then see the you know outcome and it's test it's it's actually testifying to the fact that yes you know, god did lead god, you know in hindsight they'll be able to you know kind of come alongside and say okay and trust your trust your leading right so maybe it's time to just discuss and negotiate and come to you know that kind of a thing yeah hope that help jackin yeah okay right okay so let's uh, let's look at um, so oops uh, something someone else wanted to share something um okay yeah nina uh, go ahead please yes uh, actually a question pastor are you able to hear me yeah sure i can hear you yeah uh the from uh, the second chapter what we were looking at we kind of understood that uh the person governed by the i mean the one who has the holy spirit mm -hmm. uh is the spiritual person and he is uh yeah i mean so uh, open to the things of god and able to understand and yeah. things, i mean that is the conclusion that we have right uh, so but then how do we um, relate or uh, you know when people mm. their faiths now we we are quite clear that we have the, even the mind of christ when right. we are uh, when we mm. really follow the directives of the holy spirit that is what yeah. will emanate that is what will result right now when we talk about spirituality of the other faiths Right. So then, when we know very clearly that it is the Holy Spirit which makes a person spiritual, then mm. th that spirituality would have its roots in then a totally a different source, yes, dimension. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so yes. then, uh, no, it'll also think that in the sense whenever we talk to the other faith people, yeah, to kind of say that it it is the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit that really governs spiritual things and. that is really the godly thing but what you are saying is it will it will be difficult isn't it to kind of yes. uh, say or speak to those people yeah, yeah so so if the if the reference because the reference reference point 
is completely different right so yeah. so when we say um uh, uh, yeah when we say natural man we are saying okay they are not open to the things of the spirit of god right god. their spirit is not born again so they are not so that is one thing you know their spirit is not born again we can also say maybe you know a person is a believer but then uh -huh. they are ruled by their natural senses more than they are you know than being open to the uh, being led by the spirit of god so that is those are two scenarios that possible scenarios right so in both cases we are unable to uh, receive the things that are given by the spirit because these are spiritually discerned right so yes the reference point is completely different so oh. it is a difficult conversation if um, you know if um, let's say we want to move together right it's a it's a difficult conversation yes right uh, the um, uh, one sorry sorry to persist uh, but that uh, so the spirituality of the people of uh, the, it would have its roots in uh, you know so i mean we would know that it's not really spirituality would can we say that it comes from the other dimension i mean yeah absolutely yeah because they're opening you know like um, like if they yeah. They they could see they could be spiritual definitely uh -huh. because they are o yes. open to the you know uh, the powers of darkness the uh, the, uh -huh. you know yeah the evil spirits and spirits of deception and so on so they are open to that uh -huh. and so uh -huh. yeah they are spiritual in a in a, in the sense that they are open to you know the promptings and leadings of you know the, the, and they are also having experiences etc um, uh -huh. but uh, but not their spirit is dead to God to the living God. Okay. You know, to the Holy Spirit. So that, that is very clear. No, I mean, we don't have to kind of be in any doubt about that. Is it? No, 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 no. That's absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's that's yeah. very clear. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Sure. Uh, hello, Pastor Ravli here. Yeah, Ravli. Yeah. I just have a question. Um, uh -huh. When you are talking about the um, Holy Spirit revealing us um, the understanding of the Scripture and God. Yeah, uh, but we see different interpretation of the same scripture mm. uh, among uh, among believers. Right. Uh, for example, um, uh, I mean, for example, we think we believe that uh, uh, women can preach. Just in this example, and right. there many many uh, preachers or many congregations they believe women cannot preach based on the same scripture. Mm. So. Um, as a believers, when we are hearing different perspectives, it's our mm. duty to um, judge what is right, what is not exactly interpreted in the right way, mm. or uh, what is within context or what what is without context. So, um, mm. how do we, uh, you know, channel through all of this? What mm. is uh, what is right? What if they say you are hearing wrong from the Holy Spirit? This is what it is because we also have Holy Spirit in us. We also believe in Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. how do we uh, comprehend that? Right. Right. So yeah. So uh, so this, okay. This example of women in ministry, etc. So we know uh, the Lord of Understanding. Um, it, you know, maybe the Spirit of God is speaking, but we're not listening, right? Because what uh, what culture has, what traditions we come from, what culture um, has, you know, culture we come from. When I say church culture, uh, that is speaking louder, right? So, and everyone goes through that that journey of unlearning certain things, right? Yeah, the same Holy Spirit is leading us, but. The voice of popular culture, even popular church culture, is louder than the voice of seems to be louder uh, than the voice of truth, which comes from God, right? So, so even for a believer, so that's why you know we're not able to see eye to eye, you know, even about water baptism, about Holy Spirit baptism, so many things, right? So there could be a, a because of a deficient understanding, because of a lack of revelation, right? So that's the thing, you know. There's a lack of revelation. Like I know of someone. Uh, this, is, this is a pastor for many years, for many years, uh, in a denomination church, of many years, who, who, who a wonderful man of God, wonderful man of God, loves Jesus, loves the Word, loves God's people, right? He, such a pastoral heart. But he was not open to the 
you know, he was not open to the gifts of the Spirit, the way, you know, we say, okay, you pray, you receive, uh, open to the gifts of the Spirit, particularly tongues, right? But then after many years, I think he was in his, probably in his 60s, right, like when he went for a conference and and there he, his roommate was someone who would, or the, the, the neighbor, neighboring room was someone who, who was praying in spirit, praying in tongues and all that. And then he said, God, you know, I know all these years I've not this thing, but then I, I, he came to interact with that person, saw that he was a wonderful man and et cetera. You know, I, I see this. I, I know I never prayed or anything, but then I want you to fill me, right? By his bedside, he just knelt down and, and he started praying in the spirit and praying. In, you know, and then he, he came back and testified to us in the pastoral group. You know, meeting, and he said, "You know, this is what happened to me, and it was wonderful." So, so all those all those years, of course, he his his teaching was he led by Spirit of God, yeah. But his mind was more renewed to the tradition that he grew up in, or tradition which he ministered in, right? But then when he came out of that, and you know, went to this church where the cross section of people, not church, sorry, uh, went to this conference where the cross section of people, wonderful people. From different denominations, and then and then he his hunger was stirred up, and then he received. So, yeah. So this happens, and uh, as I think, for us to coexist and just go along would be uh, as long as the the foundations are not compromised. The fundamental things, like when we look at it, we'd say, okay, there are some core fundamental beliefs that cannot be compromised at whatever cost right the uniqueness of the lord that he is the way the truth and the life the the word of god being inerrant infallible inspired by the holy spirit you know salvation comes from you know jesus alone so all these things are non negotiables so if there is a difference in that then you know we cannot that's why you cannot be unequally yoked right uh, to someone who does not believe in these things. This is the core thing. But there are peripheral things, right? Secondary, tertiary issues. The primary thing is this. There are other things like like this, you know, what they believe about women in ministry, etc. Now it's difficult, but those are things that would come as we journey along. As long as this foundation is there, those are things that that would come. Yes, they are missing out. They're missing out on being ministered to, God speaking through uh, a woman, you know, an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, evangelist, teacher, you know, they're missing out on that. But, well, that's that's it. You know, they're missing out on that. But then that revelation understanding can come as they journey along. And then they realize, hey, when Ephesians 4 talks about any gave gifts, gave gifts to man, it's actually talking about humanity, not man. It's talking about mankind, not gender man. Right, we see in the Bible several people, women who ministered. You know, all these people, all these apostles, men being mentioned in uh, Romans 16. So that comes with the revelation. Comes, yeah, as we journey. So, so the the, the response is that Holy Spirit is speaking. We believe, yeah, Holy Spirit speaks, Holy Spirit leads. But there are some things that our mind is not renewed to. Or maybe our mind is too renewed to culture, church tradition, and whatever we hold on strongly, and and that's the problem, right? Yeah. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. So, so the danger of carnality. You know, it's very plain and clear. It's saying, you know, you are not able to receive solid food. Hey, you, you're saying, God, teach me, speak to me, you know, but you're not able to. Your, your system is not able to receive it. You know, internally, you're not able to receive because you are carnal. Envy, jealousy, strife, division, you're not able to receive it, right? So Paul uh, very clearly tells them, hey, that behavior is carnal. That is not... That is like behaving like mere men, and we you are not called for that. You're called for something higher, right? We are not called to behave like mere men. Right? Let's go on to um, verse five, right? Chapter three, verse five. 
So he's saying, you know, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. So, so he's saying, you know, you need to change your perception or change the way you see us. Change the way you see yourself, change the way you see us. Okay, So he's saying, we're all ministers of God. Each one has a assignment, each one has a calling, each one has a you know unique gifting, etc. So one is planting, the other one is watering. But he says, you know, one unique thing is this, that it is God who gives the increase. The outcome comes because of God. One who's sowing, the result, the fruitfulness of sowing comes because of God. The one who's watering, Again, the fruitfulness of the watering function comes because of God. Right? It is God who gives the increase. And we are one. That we are all one. He says, you know, um, uh, who are we? We are ministers through whom you believed as God gave to each one. God is the one who sent us. God is the one who gave us the ministry, the opportunity to serve, uh, and opportunity to minister to people. And God is the one who does that. So um, we are one. Right. He says, verse 8, he who plants, he who waters, one and the same, same level. There's no hierarchy. Right. Yes, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, maybe, you know, doing some pioneering work, maybe you might say that, okay, I put in more effort. I, you know, this person is building on something that I put in. You know, there's no, there's no comparison. There's no taking glory personally. Uh, and saying, you know, this is much harder work, and you, you you have it easy. There's no there's no aspect of that at all. There's no comparison, right? Because he says, it is God, it is God who sends. It is uh, is very clear. He says that God gave to each one, right? The Lord gave to each one. So there's no question. It's it's God's plan. It's God's purpose, and He is the one who sent, right? Now, verse nine. Again, very uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a good perspective to have. It's a, it just humbles us. He says, "All of us are God's co-workers, right?" In other words, modern terms, he would say, "We are God's colleagues. Right? We are in the same team. We are God's co-workers, and right? we are working along with God. We are working along with each other." <clears throat> so there's no question of. You know, when you're working in a team, there's no question of, you know, being a solo star or whatever. You know, you're equally sharing responsibilities. You're being accountable. So he's saying, and on top of it, we are God's team. Right? And he says, you are God's field. You know, so we get an idea about the church. He's saying, you are God's field. You are God's building. So as a field, you know, there's something that's happening. There's work that is happening, there's sowing, there's watering, there's nurturing, there's uh, protecting that's happening. And with all the intention of something that, that is going to bloom and, and thrive and be fruitful. You are God's field, right? And you are God's building. You know, the, again, the picture of something that is being built up. You know, there's foundation laid, there's work that's happening, the pillars are coming up, and then, you know, building and everything. You know, it's a beautiful thing that's coming up. So says, according to the grace of God, this is what I did. Verse 10, what does he say? As a master builder, I laid the foundation. Okay, And, and, and later he will say, you know, this foundation is, is Christ. You know, no one can replace that with anything else. I laid the foundation. And he's talking about the Corinthian church in context. He's talking about the fact that he went, he preached the gospel, he laid the foundation, meaning Jesus, in each one's heart. Right, another builds on it. Now here the reference is to other ministers of God who visited Corinth. Right, he's referring to Apollos, obviously, because they're talking about Apollos and he's saying, you know, I'm of Apollos and all that. So Apollos, he visited when Paul was in Ephesus, he visited Corinth. Um, so saying, you know, another builds on it, but let each one be careful how 
we built. Okay. So what is this building on it refer to? What is he talking about? Another one is building on this foundation. What is he talking about? No? Huh? Sorry? Watering. Doctrine, okay, okay. Yeah, he's talking generally about ministry. How a person is ministering in a particular place to a group of people. So that is what, you know, you, because what are you doing when you're ministering? You're building up people in the spirit, right? So, yes, it involves the right doctrine, teaching, etc. So he's saying, you know, careful how you build. You know, later on, he goes on to say, the material that you used to build, right, verse, uh, verse 11, he says, uh, the foundation is Jesus, and then he goes on to say, so how you build, you know, the method you used to build, what material you used to build, how you built, how you are ministering to people. Be careful, right? Um, because one thing is very clear, that the foundation no one can replace, but then you be careful how you build, okay? Um, another parallel to it is that uh, when referring to the work of ministry, the Lord Jesus also talks about the field and, you know, sowing, reaping, harvesting and all that. John chapter 4, right? Uh, in his conversation with the woman at the well and then later on, he says, you know, uh, addressing the disciples, you know, there are still four months. Don't you not say there are still four months and then they harvest. And he says, look up. Lift your eyes, look at the fields, they are always already white for harvest. And then he goes on to say, you know, how about, uh, you know, one is sowing, the other one is reaping. Uh, I sent you to reap that which you have not labored to sow, right? So someone else has sowed, someone else has sown, done the work, but then God has given the increase. And now you are going into a field in order to reap, and you have actually entered partnering with their labors. Right, so, so that's the picture that we have, right? So, whatever area that we served in, uh, serve in, maybe in a local church, maybe in, you know, outside of the local church, understand that um, uh, we cannot have this kind of strife or comparison or compare ourselves to say, okay, you know, sometimes we think, okay, uh, I'm serving in uh, adult church, and uh, we tend to kind of minimize the importance of, let's say, even children's ministry, for example. You know. But then, in God's eyes, both are precious. Right? You're building up children, you're building up adults, both are precious. Because these are, you know, his, his children, both are precious. Maybe, you know, they are we're saying, oh, they're teaching some action songs, we are discussing some very important concepts here, <laughs> you know, in adult church. No. You're building up a life. You're building up, and the foundation is Jesus, right? That person in their heart, the foundation is, and you're building up. So he's saying, you be careful, right? So it could be the kind of ministry. It could be, you know, maybe, you know, a ministry to senior citizens, the elderly, whatever, you know. Uh, maybe it does not have too much height. Maybe the ministry is hidden. You know, nobody gets to see. Uh, nobody gets to, you know, applaud and, you know, appreciate you. But then. God is seeing and he sees and he notices and he's saying, okay, this is what it is. They are God's building. They are God's field. Okay. So, so Paul is saying that, right? He's reminding them, this is how you should see us, ministers of God. You can't just say, you know, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos and elevate man beyond and beyond the honor that is due them because that is going to create division. You cannot do that. And this is the right perspective. And it goes on to say in verse 11, says, um, you know, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for that, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work. Of what sort it is. If anyone works which he has built on, if anyone's work, sorry, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire. So some something very 
you know very important something very sobering serious that he me mentions here right um so he's saying what kind of material are you using what kind of ma what manner of work is going on in your ministry right so he's uh, obviously referring to the ones who are ministering okay so he says um, philippines talks about philippines 1 talks about the fact do nothing out of selfish ambition do nothing right um, and uh, uh, i'm sorry uh, philippines actually talks about uh, those who preach christ out of uh, wrong intentions like wrong motives right and paul also you know says that don't do anything out of selfish ambition okay so motive and our intention or method you know you know we need to be we need to be serious and we need to give it you know serious thought because that is hidden right the motive actually is hidden and the motive is important people cannot see the motive motive meaning you know your inner desire why are you doing what you're doing so that people can't see people can only see okay the something is happening on the outside but then the motive needs to be pure motive needs to be uh spiritual in nature and not fleshly right a selfish ambition is a fleshly motive right popularity fame personal popularity fame again a fleshly motive you know uh so so these are fleshly in nature so one needs to be careful and because that will again you know have a bearing on the kind of work that happens right so if our motive and method are spirit inspired spirit led spirit governed then things are going to be lasting it's going to be eternal it's going to be strong right but if we are doing with the wrong motive and a wrong method right so wrong method would be like you know things that are short term things that are fleshly in nature you know there's some activity happening but the work that is happening is very humanistic fleshly in nature it's not serving eternal purpose so so he's saying that you know on that day is referring to the day of judgment he's saying you know it will not stand the test it will not stand so it's it's like it's going to be deficient right yeah we will still be saved we will be saved because we put our faith in christ but then you know the work is not uh it is not something that that is of lasting value you know, you've not built up the people uh to continue on you know you're not served the people well because your motivation is by the flesh and the things that you the way you minister the things the way it was not according to the spirit of god right so it's not going to last okay the things that you put in people right maybe it was something popular maybe it was something that was you know off the earth right not of eternal value so it's not going to help them it's not going to help them continue on their journey it, you know whatever right it is it is deficient in the sense just like how like if it's wood or hay it is going to get burnt up right uh, and if it's not a lasting material it is going to get burnt up and so he's saying okay it has to be something that's eternal gold silver precious stones right something of value something that will stand the test of time let it be built with eternal things right so so that's again you know something for us as uh, you know maybe even as leaders as pastors um, you know this is how you build okay because the foundation is christ you are in god's team you are co-workers with god so paul is warning take heed how you build okay so so that's something that he says okay any questions here any any doubts anything that you want to share yeah yeah okay. go ahead again yeah. pastor like we are ending the first section we we mentioned a scripture like so sorry what uh like first section we are ending the you oh. mentioned a scripture like uh like what is with my spirit is not he is not him like who is not like spirit of jesus he is, he is not him so which verse is uh, referring to i i have to check but i am not getting... he is not him huh? yes i think in romans uh, 
Um, yeah, can you just explain a little bit? Um, in carnal mind only we discuss that scripture. Uh, uh like um in, in the in the book of Romans, Romans 8. Yes, Romans 8. Okay. Romans 8. So we looked at um uh, we carnally uh, we looked at verses six, seven. Any of those verses? Uh, verse nine. Verse nine, okay. For if you're not in the flesh, but you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, and if 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 he, anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah. my question is like, I heard like some pastors are preaching like like uh, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't receive the tongues, if you don't receive the like, what to say like anointing hmm. and all, uh, like you are not. God thing like that is it teaching right or what spirit is mentioned? So, so there are different titles to the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ, right? Spirit of Christ, uh, Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, all that uh, title. So, this particular verse is is saying that you know if you if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, meaning see if you put your faith in Christ, if you receive Him as Lord and Savior, then you are sealed by the Spirit, right? Which means. Um, you know, the you you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells you because He's the one who's going to convict you of sin, of righteousness, everything. You receive. So if anyone has not done that, then obviously they are not they are not Christ. So so that is what he's saying. You know, uh, when when referring to the carnality of a person, he's saying you know you are not His. If if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, then there's no. There's no question, you know, that they are not his. Um, but, and in verse 10, he says, and if Christ is in you, right, then, which means he's talking, addressing a believer, if, as a, if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And then he goes on to say, you know, he who gave, who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, etc., through the spirit who dwells in you. So, if Christ is, if the Spirit of Christ is not in us, then what? Uh, I mean, what? What is the possibility? You know, how does that happen when a person does not receive, has not received Jesus? So that is the thing. So if I've not received Jesus, then obviously I'm not His. It's very simple. Yes, I know what you're saying. You know, like people, people uh, say, okay, if you've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you're not walking in the gifts of the Spirit. Then you're not belonging to you. That is not what he's saying. Right? That's that's the thing. Right? Yeah. Any other um, thoughts? She asked a question. Okay. Yeah, like, go ahead. Uh, it's a simple question, Pastor. So some one time like I heard from someone. Uh, some people they are in the ministry, like they're not the pastor, but they're helping in the ministry as a take care and all. Right. So for them, like they have to be have received a Holy Spirit of baptism and like they should speak in tongues only then they are able to do that, or it's okay if they are even not speaking in tongues, they can ministry. Hmm. So they are believers. Yeah, they are believers. Yeah. So every believer, the Bible talks about the fact that every believer is a minister. Okay, so in some form or the other. Now, they could be a mature believer, they can be an immature believer, whatever. Every believer is a minister. Why, why do we say that? Because Ephesians 4 talks about the fivefold ministry, and it says, you know, this ministry exists for the equipping of the saints for the purpose of ministry. I think it's Ephesians 4. Let me just. Uh, um, Ephesians 4, um, 11 and 12. Right for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, which means that the saints of God, who are the saints of God, the sanctified ones, who are the sanctified ones, the believers in Jesus, who are set apart. Every saint of God has a ministry, and they are to be equipped for ministry. And the fivefold ministry gift exists for that. So, as a believer, you can. The Great Commission is for those who believe, those who are disciples of the Lord, following Jesus. Go preach the gospel to every creature, you know. So it's for it's for everyone. So, you know, 
as a believer am i supposed to stay the way i way i am or grow obviously the answer is i have called to grow grow in my knowledge of god go in my intimacy with him grow in my understanding of him and also grow into everything that the lord has which includes baptism of the spirit which includes gifts of the spirit which are basic things for a believer so so that's the thing so one cannot restrict and say okay i have not got this therefore there's no license no you will be even more effective you will be even more impactful because god has this that you be witness with power right i think that that thought comes because jesus said you wait for me you wait for the promise of the father he told the disciples we wait till you are endued with power on high and then you will be witnesses for me you know jerusalem judea and uttermost parts of the earth so probably it's from that they're saying okay you wait till you are you know this thing so this is see obviously this is god's desire to fill fill every believer baptize every believer in the holy spirit so that they can be witnesses with power what is the power of god all these gifts they are expressions of the power of god so that's the thing yeah okay you have a any other no oh. okay so let's um, yeah so let, as we move on we see that uh, verse 16 right so verse 16 um paul says so this let me just quickly okay we so we're in chapter 3 verse 16 so do you not know that you are the temple of god and the spirit of god dwells in you if anyone defiles the temple of god god will destroy him for the temple of god is holy which temple you are right let no one deceive himself if anyone among you seems to be wise in this age let him become a fool that he may become wise for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with god for it is written he catches the wise in their own craftiness and again the lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile therefore let no one boast in men for all things are yours whether paul or apollos or cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come all are yours and you are christ and christ is god okay so um paul is actually giving this whole picture of the fact that you know another aspect of the spirit of god and uh, another revelation of the spirit of god he's saying now okay you have called to minister in this way christ is foundation and the, the, the things with eternal things you are supposed to build etc right and then he goes on to say you are the temple of god okay so the spirit of god dwells in you here he is referring to this people collectively as a church he is saying collectively as a as a church as a body of believers you are the temple of god the spirit of god dwells in you and if anyone defiles the temple what does defile mean make it unholy dirty unholy damage deface it right so anyone defiles the temple god will destroy him okay so he's saying god is very serious about this you cannot defile the temple he's talking what is he talking about he's talking about the people so collectively talking about the people and so saying you you know we cannot defile the temple of god so the temple of god is holy which temple you are so he's saying you know don't bring in anything don't do anything that defiles the people right that uh, that damages that defiles the temple of god and he's again he's referring to the people of god right so he's saying you know um he's saying and then goes on to say verse 18 um you know if anyone defiles sorry verse 18 he says uh, god will destroy him which means god will god is very um uh, serious about this and uh, god will destroy right verse 18 let no one deceive himself okay let no one cheat himself or you know deceive himself if if you think that you seem to be wise you need to kind of become of you know you need to become a fool that you may become wise why uh, because you know the the wisdom of the world um wisdom of god is definitely better than the the the, the wisdom of the world right um what it says that the wisdom of the world is foolishness with god for it is written he catches the wise in their own craftiness 
the lord knows the thoughts of the wise and that they are empty that they are futile okay so again verse 21 is bringing back the focus and saying don't boast in man okay don't make your boast in man all these things are yours right when you say when you boast in man when you say okay uh, this is so and so and you are boasting about that person you are actually deriving you're trying what you're saying is you know i i'm deriving my identity from him from his ministry i'm associated with this person you know i belong to this person's team or ministry or what what are we doing we are actually you know boasting in man right we can honor the person we can honor the you know the, the minister the, the servant of god but to boast means that you are becoming prideful, you are becoming proud on account of that person. Right? Yes, you know, there's a healthy way in which you are, you know, for want of a better word, you are proud of that person. In the sense, you, you know, you you are happy that this person is ministering in such a way. You're happy that you have been blessed, right? You're happy that okay, this person's ministry is blessing so many people. You're happy, you know, you're you're you know, that's a good thing. Right? You're thanking God for the for blessing this person and, and through that person many are being blessed. Yeah, that's that's fine. And you're honoring that person. That's okay. But if you're going to boast, which means you know it's it comes from a place of pride, right? Where you are prideful, you are proud, uh, and it's not a healthy thing. Right. So he's saying, you know, let no one boast in men. All these things are yours. The ministers of God, God sends, everything is yours. But God ultimately gets the glory. To him has to be the glory, right? So we cannot boast. So what happens is when we boast, we are actually creating division, right? There is carnality, right? We are boasting. We are, we are saying our identity is not Christ, but our identity is this man of God, this woman of God. Right? So that's the thing. That's the boasting. And it can even be a, you know, it can even come from a church or, you know, a place where we are worshiping and and all that. You know, now the thing is that, yeah, this is this is from God, this is for God's people, but we cannot, we we should not resort to boasting. Okay, um, so so all these things he shares, and then he ends by saying, you know, you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Okay. Okay, so we, what we'll do is we'll um, we'll kind of stop here. Any uh, any questions? Um, anything that anything that you thought you know what, what made sense to you? Something that was emphasized um, that caught your attention? You know, maybe you could share. Um, we look, yeah, yeah. So God takes that seriously, defiling the. No, when you say church, we are talking about the the people collectively. It can happen individually also, obviously. So if you look at chapter six, right? Chapter six, uh, he says, "Do you not know?" Chapter six and verse nineteen says, "Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and not your own, etc." Right? And then he says, "You know, you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, etc." Right? And he talks about an individual's decision to walk in immorality and uh, you know things of the flesh, and he's saying you know you can't do that, right? So when we say when we're defiling the body of believers, how do you do that? It could be through you know it could be through wrong teaching, it could be some manipulations, you know something that you do in order to benefit yourself, and then it's damaging the person. So God takes that very seriously. He says God will destroy. Because it's affecting a body of the thing, body of believers, and uh, among whom he dwells. So that's a, you know, that's a serious thing, yeah. Um, and in several places, you know, we see that okay, the church, God's building, it always belongs to God. Right? Everywhere we see the the early uh, disciples, they had this understanding. On the apostles saying, God's building. God's field. Peter also says, "You're the flock of God. You know, uh, He's the chief shepherd, etc." So they they had this understanding. You know, it's not 
of course god is using us to minister god is using us to even start a work you know in in paul's case he's the one who went and ministered when with so much of danger opposition and everything he went there and ministered in corinth and and really built everything from the ground up right believer by believer and he taught them these wonderful things you know everything that you see is a reiteration of what he has already taught them so he talked them about the salvation gifts uh work of the holy spirit ministry how one should be etc he taught them but he knows that it's by the grace of god you know this work that has happened it's by the grace of god and it, people don't belong to him right he doesn't own people god owns them so he's very careful to give him the glory he's very uh, you know he, so he says he, he knows the extent the seriousness of of it so of misusing misusing people manipulating people uh he's you he know the seriousness of it so he's saying you know uh, god will destroy so you need to be careful yeah any other thoughts on this something that uh, spoke to you or hi pastor yeah uh, okay. so uh, i think for me um the part where the holy spirit is the one who is uh, revealing the mysteries um to you even though we are in a place of um, not knowing or not seeing in with the physical eyes or understanding but he is the one that is going to reveal your steps or the things that you need to do in your life uh yeah that that something gives a lot of uh, hope and lot of confidence in god right. that uh, we are even though we feel blank even though we we feel we know things but uh, that's not our own but we depend on holy spirit right right yeah praise god yeah and jackin uh, we are uh, to align ourselves always to god's word the truth renewing our minds towards this one thing being led by the spirit um, it keeps us from falling into our carnality and ways of the world yeah called to live with this spiritual mindset yes that's true yeah right so it actually you know the whole thing is a very humbling lesson right um the fact that it's a privilege but it's not something that goes to your head you know yes you are special because the fact that hey you are god's temple but at the same time you know you don't boast in another man or another man's ministry or you don't get your identity out of that so it's a it's a, it's a you know it, it's a place where you boast in god where you glorify god where you know that you are special and you know you are unique but you don't let that get to your head it it continues to keep us in a place of uh, humility and uh, what is important right and we know what what is important know what you can prioritize especially the foundation and things that you need to do uh in terms of ministry and things of eternal value etc you know so it it just uh, the whole thing which keeps uh, us humble and the perspective that we are god's team it's again a privilege that we are co-workers with god uh, the whole kingdom mindset you know this is god's god's property god's kingdom and we are co-workers with him right okay. fine so we'll stop here next class we'll start with uh, chapter 4 right thank you god bless bye